Okay, so maybe you're here because you're having some trouble with your heat problems homework. So I just want to give you a few hints and maybe help you work through some of these things and maybe give you a little bit more confidence in, in some of these problems. So now we've already done a, a, a regular heat problem where I was solving for my heat uh, and you can see that in the heat and temperature lecture. But what happens if I need to find something like mass or I need to find something like change in temperature? Well, first of all, let's go back and and look at the pyramid that we use, all right? So we're gonna set our draw our pyramid over here to the side, so we have it as a reference tool. And I know that I'm gonna have heat here, I'm going to have mass here, I'm going to have delta T or my change in temperature here. So I know that I'm gonna have two of these three uh, variables. So I'm just gonna come up with some problems. These aren't the exact problems that are in your homework, but maybe it'll it'll be something that you can reference to. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to find a problem dealing with mass, and I want to solve for mass. So I'm just going to throw in some numbers here. Let's just say we have something like 1,000 calories, and we know that in those 1,000 calories, my temperature changed from 20 degrees Celsius uh, to, let's say, uh, 30 degrees Celsius. And, you know, these are just numbers that I'm, I'm throwing in here. Well, first thing we need to know is we know that we wanted to solve for mass. So I'm going to put a question mark here. And now I want to solve to find out what my change in temperature is going to be. Now remember, change in temperature is always going to be final minus starting. So in this case here, I'm going to take my final temperature, which is 30 degrees Celsius. I'm going to subtract my starting temperature, which is 20 degrees Celsius, and that's going to give me a change in temperature of 10 degrees Celsius. And I know that's positive because the temperature went up, and final minus starting gives me that positive number. Now, I want to solve for mass. So what I need to be able to do is look at my pyramid here. I'm going to cover up my M here, and I see that mass is equal to heat divided by my change in temperature. So let's set up our equation here. We got our mass. All right, we know that heat is 1,000 calories, so I'm going to put that up on top. But in these problems, I want to use my calorie here. Instead of using calories, let's use grams degrees Celsius because that's where we get a calorie from. And on the bottom, I'm going to put in my change in temperature, which is 10 degrees Celsius. Now, the first thing I want to look at is, are there any units that I need to cancel? Well, I have grams degrees Celsius on top. I have degrees Celsius on the bottom. That's going to cancel out. So I'm going to get rid of those. So at least I know in my answer that I'm going to get my answer in grams. Now all I need to do is take my 1,000 grams divided by 10, and that's going to give me a mass of 100 grams. And that would be the mass that would, I would find in this particular problem. So here, that's a help with the mass. All right, so continuing on with, with our problems here, we just got done with a mass problem. Well, what happens if I need to find a change in temperature? And I want to know how much does the temperature change? And again, these are just values that I'm throwing in here. Uh, these aren't ones in your homework. So again, let's go back to our our pyramid here, not my density pyramid, but my heat pyramid, so heat, mass, change in temperature. All right, so we're going to throw something in now. I'm going to put something in this case. We're going to do a negative 1,000 calories, but we're going to say heat was lost here, and we're going to say that we had a mass of, let's just throw in here, 200 grams. All right, and I want to know what is my change in temperature. Now, if I'm just finding change in temperature, I don't need to worry about starting and final temperature, so I'm just going to cross them out right now. So to solve for change in temperature, I'm going to cover up my delta T here. I see that change in temperature is equal to heat over mass, so I'm going to use that here in my equation, my delta T. My heat, since heat is being lost, all right, we're going to put in 1,000 calories but I want to write it instead of calories as grams degrees Celsius. I know that my mass here is 200 grams. I'm going to write that down here on the bottom. And notice again, I'm putting my units in. I want to keep track of my units. So I see I have grams degrees Celsius on top. I have grams on bottom. Those grams are going to cancel. 
So I know the units that I'm going to be left in are degrees Celsius. So I'm going to write that in here. And now I just need to take my 1,000 divided by 200. But again, this is going to be negative. So I'm going to get an answer of negative 5 degrees Celsius. So that's a way that I can find my change in temperature if I need to do so. All right, so this is the third in our series here of, of working out some of these heat problems. Now, we've already done mass. We've already done change in temperature. Well, what if I have a problem where I need to solve for a starting or final temperature? Let's just say, for example, I have a starting temperature of, we're going to say put in plug in 20 degrees Celsius. We have a mass of 100 grams. And let's just say I'm going to add heat here, right? So we're going to add 1,000 calories of heat. And my problem calls for, I want to know what the final temperature of this water is going to be. Now, in any of these problems, we are going to be solving for two of our three variables. For any time we're dealing with starting or final temperature, we first need to solve for delta T. So I'm going to put a question mark there as well. So let's go back to our pyramid here. I'm going to draw this out. And on top we have our heat. On the bottom we have our mass. We have our change in temperature. So let's work this out. Well, I know I'm going to be solving for my change in temperature, cover up my delta T. I know delta T is going to be heat over mass. So I'm going to plug in my values here. So I have my change in temperature. My heat is going to be 1,000 calories. But I want, again, I want to write it as grams degrees Celsius. On the bottom, I'm going to put in 100 grams. I want to look for any units that I need to cancel. Well, in this case, I need to cancel out grams. So they're going to cancel out, which leaves me my temperature in degrees Celsius. And if I do my math here, 1,000 divided by 100 is going to give me 10 degrees Celsius. Now, I'm not done. All this has done is, is given me what my change in temperature was by applying 1,000 calories of heat. We still need to figure out what our final temperature is because our delta T, we know, is 10 degrees Celsius. Now, if you recall, in class we said, okay, if I know delta T is equal to final minus starting temperature, I could rearrange this equation to be able to solve for whatever I need. Well, in this case, since I'm solving for final temperature, we look at our equations, we rearrange here, and we know that our final temperature is going to be equal to delta T plus my starting temperature. So all I need to do now is just plug in what values I have. My delta T I know is 10 degrees Celsius. My starting temperature here is going to be 20 degrees Celsius. And now all I have to do is just add them up, and I would find my problem would be 30 degrees Celsius. So now I've worked through my problem. I was able to find what my new temperature was. All right, just again, keep in mind, pay attention if heat is being added or removed, because that really can affect your values of what you're going to have in this problem.